Hi, this is Shadi and welcome back to another technique breakdown between two arts and this time it's gonna be freestyle wrestling versus judo. This is not to determine a superior art but rather to show the similarities and differences in common techniques. Uh, I'm gonna discuss few of them, not all of them because in freestyle and judo there's a lot of common techniques and the video is gonna be like two hours long if I do that so I'm gonna go over the main ones and also see how two arts that rely on different things for example judo rely on positioning softness technique while freestyle wrestling relies on strength technique and positioning and we're gonna see how for example a common technique is set up differently in two different arts and see also the similarities and the differences and the little intricacies between these common techniques perform differently uh, in both arts there's the gi involved in judo i understand that and that's gonna play a big role in this episode unlike the greco judo uh, episode so the first one it's gonna be the obvious one it's the double leg takedown and the morote gari i've talked about this several times shooting is a double edged sword in my opinion uh, it can be done with a humongous and monumental uh, strength and it can also be done very swiftly and with no strength whatsoever uh, i believe that judo allows the option of no strength because simply the kuzushi for those of you who don't know kuzushi is when you pull the sleeve and the lapel of your partner and you come in and hence they are on their tip of their toes and when they are on the tip of their toes you can easily do whatever technique using far less strength you would than someone just standing firm so in judo the morote gari is done uh, in both ways from kuzushi here as you see uh, and also you can just dive in and shoot very similar to a wrestler so the uh, presence of the gi uh, really plays a big role in this one uh, here you can see a setup from Ippon Seonage or the arm throw in wrestling it's called. Uh, but I believe that the best double leg performed is when you close the distance, you pull them towards you and then you go down surprisingly because uh, like I said it's a double edged sword. It can be done with no strength and too much strength and it can be done safely and it can be done recklessly where you get your face smashed in in a different context than grappling like MMA for example. Uh, self-defense etc uh, like I said the presence of the gi is very important uh, in the case of judo because you're allowed to, you can do and pull kuzushi which will get them off balance and also on the tip of their toes which would make shooting far easier than someone with no gi and someone that's hunched over like a wrestler also the posture plays a big role judokas are far upright while wrestlers are you know just hunched over like extremely hunched over um, in wrestling you know if you are doing collar tie two on one uh, whatever grip there is in wrestling uh, shooting can also become like a kuzushi almost because like you pull down on the neck they they react by pulling back up and this is where you can shoot uh, also you can just dive in recklessly and just use tons of strength a lot of wrestlers do that i understand that because there's no gi uh, but mainly i would prefer the judo one because it's far more safe and calculated especially in the context of MMA and self-defense. Now, I know in MMA there's no gi, so you'd have to be very calculated when shooting. Uh, jabbing as a feint and then going in, for me, it's not uh, enough. A lot of wrestlers got their face smashed in with a knee uh, during shooting, and that's why upper body control is far more important than a technique like the double leg, in my opinion. Uh, so wrestlers i do tend to think they use far strength because there's sprawling involved there's no gi so the resistance is a lot more prevalent than in judo with when someone is wearing the gi so uh this is the mainly the difference with the gi and the kuzushi so the second is we're still in the same realm it's the morote gari but this time as a single leg and in wrestling uh, this one is different than the double leg because you're just spearing into one leg and doing kuzushi and then going down and just 
wrapping your arms around one leg it's gonna be different they can they can r recover their balance so shooting is diff is almost mandatory here you can see Ryoko uh, Tamura shooting directly and then switching to a double uh, here BAM just uh, shooting no kuzushi nothing uh, it's the same as wrestling so this one tends to be a bit more common uh, with wrestlers uh, just shooting in diving in I wouldn't recommend it in uh, any other context like MMA or self-defense but uh, in grappling it works perfectly especially someone like Ryoko Tamura who is very short and she could just easily dive in uh, in wrestling uh, it can be done a bit swiftly, uh, like a low single. Low single uh, uses tends to use a lot less strength. Uh, however, when shooting, it can be done where you can go to the back. Uh, you can lift up straight into the air because, keep in mind, in wrestling there's no ippon. So diving and spearing like judo, it's uh, almost mandatory because you want them just flat on their back for that ippon. While in wrestling here, you can see. Uh, you can use it as a control tactic and then just score points they can range uh, from two to five I'm not a wrestler I'm sorry if I say something inaccurate but uh, in wrestling there's tons of varieties for the single you can shoot low you can shoot up high you can do a, a headlock and then go down for a pin so it might be different but uh, it's common to shoot and spear in judo as well when it comes to single the next one is the kataguruma or the fireman's carry uh, this one is monumentally controversial here you can see just monumental strength being used and just it's not so much so as judo or gentle way um, you know making it like grabbing the leg like this and standing up is just horrendous in my opinion when it comes to softness and being gentle and no use of strength uh, however you can do it with no strength like this because when you scoot like a almost like a squat down and then uh, doing like a pachasse we call it in French uh, almost like brushing your legs with the mat and then going up it allows you to have uh, some sort of leverage and momentum in order to pull them back up but in competition at high level someone who is also very technically uh, skilled uh, you're gonna have to use far more strength when you're doing the kataguruma standing up and thus it's not very much quote-unquote judo in my opinion uh, but there is variations where you can go down on your knees uh, and do it with no strength uh, whatsoever for example there's this uh, one story where uh, Jigoro Kano the founder of judo he was up against a sumo wrestler where he lost several times and uh, eventually he had to rely on the kataguruma but on his knees he used the push and the momentum given by uh, the sumo wrestler and then continued it rolling him on his shoulder kataguruma means shoulder wheel um, it can be done in a multiple variations like here someone is shooting on your legs uh, you can roll them on your shoulders uh, or continue the double leg rolling them on your shoulders back different from the ura nage so uh, wrestlers do it in both ways in my opinion very swiftly no strength uh, used like here go down on your knees and then pick them back up and there's also someone just being reckless like the judokas I first showed where they uh, like do these front flips and side flips and use tons and tons of strength uh, when it comes to this technique it's also a double-edged sword it can be done in multiple ways but when it comes to the risk uh, there's not much risk like someone shooting uh, again this one they share in common in my opinion the gi doesn't play that much of a role in my opinion so the fourth one and the final one is the kibisu gaishi and the ankle pick uh, this one the it's as similar as technique you have to punch them down like break their posture uh, and then pick the ankle from under them in order to lose complete balance and fall down however in judo uh, I couldn't find the uh, competition variations but it's mainly when someone lifts their leg to perform an ashiwaza technique or a leg technique like hizaguruma or sasai so it's kind of like offering you their ankle in a way and this is where you pick it so it's 
often use as a reversal rather than a straight just attack like here as you see in front of you um, they also set it up with Kochigari and Uchimata and then go and pick the ankle you can see that uh, uh, variation prevalent in Jiu Jitsu but in Judo it's uh, when someone uses Hisaguruma or like a Sasai and then they have like their ankle already high up and then you just pick it and score the uh, Wazari or Epan but uh, I would judokas very rarely use this because uh, you can easily turn uh, when someone performs this technique on you and it would not score very much but in wrestling it doesn't matter how how you fall uh, you can still score points so in wrestling it's far more prevalent and far more used than judo and plus now in judo it's become illegal like everything else I've showed you so here you can see you can block the leg with kochigari and finish it with kibisu gaishi uh, like I said in judo it's different the use here like for example here someone is trying to do a leg technique like the hisaguruma they're offering you their ankle you can reverse it with kibishu gaishi uh, this is how uh, it was mainly used in judo rather than uh, like the wrestlers which i'm gonna show you very uh, shortly so here you can see mifune dodging a, a foot sweep and then uh, reversing it with a kibisu gaishi so here you can see the wrestler almost just shoots in and picks the ankle uh, you you have to uh, like break down their posture in order to perform it because they're already hunched over and have their momentum forward and then you pick the the ankle and this is where they fall so you need something like the collar tie or like an overhook uh, or just grabbing the wrist and pull, yanking it down would also do good in the case of the ankle pick um, it's a far more common attack in uh, wrestling even judo when it was uh, like I said allowed it was rarely used because it doesn't score uh, in judo remember you need the ippon in uh, wrestling however someone falls you can still score points and add up so here like you see it was a great ankle pick uh, it's different when it comes to setting it up if I have to talk about the differences uh, it is it is far more used because like I said you score no matter how how they fall but in judo not so much so it is however a great technique the gi does play a role when pulling them down you have far more momentum than someone doing like a collar tie or an underhook or just grabbing like a tricep or cupping the tricep so I hope you enjoyed this I know there's far more techniques like teguruma or uh, like the Ashi Harai and Kochi Gari but these are the main arsenal of technique when it comes to wrestling and they are single the double uh, the ankle pick and the fireman's carry these are the like anyone who just watches an American movie where they talk about wrestling you're gonna see these techniques even if you don't know anything and their setups and technique differ from uh, judo there are some similarities like the kataguruma where you can use it swiftly and strongly but when it comes to the double you need the gi uh, in order to do it safely and far more calculated than someone just diving in and also the posture is very different and also plays a big role in the manifestation of the techniques the wrestlers are hunched over while the judoka stands up straight and manipulates the posture using the gi the lapel mainly so uh, i hope you enjoyed this uh, little comparison the technique breakdown both arts are great uh, if you have anything else to add share it down below this was shady and thank you for listening